Good afternoon. Welcome back to my kitchen, Cooking with Carol Diane. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a simple rhubarb pie. It's getting close to 4th of July, and there's three main pies at 4th of July that you'll see everywhere, uh, especially when you go to functions um, that have vendors and different things that people make um, homemade pies, and uh, you can get cherry, apple, blueberry, and usually a rhubarb pie. And they're very, very good. If you've never tasted a rhubarb, um, it's very sweet. Uh, I used to make strawberry rhubarb pie all the time. But today I'm just gonna make it very simple and do rhubarb pie. So I'm gonna start with the rhubarb, of which my daughter-in-law has a plant at her house. And I said, I need some rhubarb to make a pie and she said and she actually said she had some so she brought me some but she says how much do you want and I said enough to make three to four cups and that's all she brought me because she just doesn't know how much um, I need of it but that's okay so I went around the corner to my farmers market I went to the grocery store but I didn't like the rhubarb that they had and this is usually the rhubarb the size of rhubarb that I grow in my garden uh, my rhubarb's not doing real well this year because it had to be transplanted and um, the heat where I live, the, the three digit temperatures, um, it took a hit on all my roses down here, it bleached them and it didn't do my rhubarb much good either. So I replanted my rhubarb and I should get stalks this big, I really should, along with some about this size also, which is fine. So very first thing that you start with is that you make sure you have this recipe that I'm using, it's pretty simple, and it calls for four cups. So I'm going to take, um, I'm gonna take her rhubarb first, and I did forget my cutting board, so just a second. I always think I have everything lined out, and then I always forget something. But that's all right. So I asked her to cut it um, on an angle and put it in a Ziploc bag to bring to me and put it on ice. Because if you don't, the little ends will actually curl around in a circle. Um, and it's very much like a celery stalk. There'll be long strands that you, you can just peel right off like this. You can just peel them right off. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead with this one and I'm gonna go ahead with the on the angle cut and you just want bite size you can make them chunky um, sizes or thin it's however you like it but i'm going to start with just doing this size put in my measuring cup here until i get up to four cups i went out this morning and took a walk um, on my property and I made a video that's called um, a walk in my garden. I hope you all watch it because um, I've worked very hard in my little garden area of um, Well, it's not really garden. It's more my rose bed area. I do have a vegetable garden um, That I have uh, tomatoes and I have um, spaghetti squash in there and carrots and radishes just all kinds of little things in there. And then I have a greenhouse that I grow my herbs. Take off that little bad area right here. And the main part of what I wanted to show everybody in my walk through the garden was that um, where this area that I have improved is, it was nothing, it was just dirt. There was no grass, it was just sandy dirt, it looked dry and hot, and I completely transformed it. And every year now, I've been trying to add to that area something, whether it's yard art that I find, little metal um, yard, different pieces, um, or, you know, a bird bath, or chimes to hang on the pergola. I'll, I'll always find something. And uh, so that's what I was doing this morning, was kind of enjoying my walk in the garden. Okay, now as you can see, I barely have about two cups in here. So I'll go ahead with the smaller one of these and I can cut it right in two. It's going to make a lot more. Uh, 
I couldn't tell you offhand really truly the sweetest part of the rhubarb, whether it is the stock that is bright red or the ones that are more green, because I have tasted both. I have had some uh, rhubarb of the red that's very good, and then I've had um, the green that's very good. And like I said, if I was making a strawberry rhubarb pie, I would probably be doing two cups of rhubarb to two cups of um, strawberries. Just sliced up strawberries would be just fine. Okay, so I'm getting close to my four cups, which is great. This is a very tasty pie. It really is very sweet and tasty. I've had people look at me like, oh, you know, rhubarb pie. No, they'll pass on that. It's like, but have you ever really tasted one? Because they're quite delicious. They really are. You can make them where um, you have just a crumble top on them. Um, today, I'm gonna do a regular pie. Okay, so there's my four cups. So we start with that. And I didn't need these two, but I will save this for maybe a little rhubarb crisp that I wanna do. I'll save those. Now you're gonna get yourself a bowl. Put the rhubarb in the bowl. And then take, uh, let's see, my recipe calls for, I have four cups of the rhubarb, uh, one and one third cup of sugar, regular sugar, pour that in and then six tablespoons of flour, and it's just all-purpose flour, whatever you have is fine. So six tablespoons of that. There's one, two, three, four, five, six six tablespoons of flour i have always added a little cinnamon to mine i just think it gives it kind of a nice little flavor so i'm going to add about um, a um, teaspoonful of cinnamon just my preference you don't have to put it in if you don't want to but i like it in there and then you're going to just stir all that up so you're just gonna incorporate it where it's all blended nice. That's your base of the ingredients. Just make sure that rhubarb gets nice and blended with the, the flour and the sugar. Okay, now we're gonna set that aside for just a minute. Easy peasy. Gonna take one of these again. It's about uh, 89 degrees temperature outside. And I could certainly make a pie crust, but why when you have these already made? These are the Pillsbury uh, pie crust. So I'm gonna use them. And I'm gonna get my pastry cloth out. Mine, I roll up and I keep mine in the refrigerator. I like to have my pastry cloth in there so that nothing harms it. As far as uh, I said before, I've lived in places where um, I've had little, what's called little weevil um, bugs that get into um, flour and dry ingredients. And sometimes it can get onto your pastry cloth and that's not good either. When I get done with the pastry cloth, I usually take it either to the sink or I'll go outside and I will, you know, flip it a little bit and get all the excess off of there. Whether I'm doing cinnamon rolls on here or whatever pastry I'm doing, I just want that extra, um, whatever I'm working with, sugars and different things off of here before I start again with a nice surface. So this one's all nice and clean. And I'm gonna add just a little bit of flour to my bowl, pastry cloth here. Just a little bit. Roll my pan a little bit so I get some of it on there. Then I'm going to take the pie pastry. And I like to roll mine to get the flour already started on it. Because sometimes these don't want to work for me. This one's doing pretty good today. 
doing pretty good. And you just kind of roll that out. Now they're already a circle, okay? But you want it to be a little bit larger than that uh, because you want it to be sure and fit in whatever pie pan that you're gonna use. Today I'm using this one. And I lightly greased it. If you have a pan that you think, no, my pie pan's just fine, it, everything comes out fine, that's great, go ahead and use it. Okay, so that just kind of gets the wrinkles out and makes it where it'll go in the pie pan. I stick it in, and then we're just gonna kinda make sure it sticks down in there all the way around in my pan. That's first step. First, first step. And we're seated. Now we're going to take our ingredients, and again, just kind of make sure that all of the sugar and the flour is well mixed into the rhubarb. And then you pour it all in your pie pan with your pastry. It's all in there nice. This is a nine inch pie pan. Uh, depending on what size of pie you want to make, I've made really large rhubarb pies before. Just kind of work it around where it's all evenly on the sides. Nice. Then I'm gonna take some butter and I'm going to put, calls for about a tablespoon of the butter, but you can just eyeball this and just put little dollops around. Doesn't have to be a whole lot. But this is giving it where um, the sugar's in there. It's gonna blend really nice. Okay, now we wanna top. So with the second one, you can put it as is of just the um, rolled out pastry. But I think today, to show the young girls that don't know how to make this. I think what I'm gonna do is um, make a pretty little lattice top on my pie. I think they'll like that. I'm alone this 4th of July, husband's off working again. <laughs> that's what he does. Doesn't mean I can't enjoy some good food. And that's what I'm gonna do. That's what I'm gonna do. My next video I'm going to make is cooking uh, some fried chicken. That's kind of a riot for me because I thought everybody knows how to cook fried chicken. But I have had three requests for me to make fried chicken. And not only just fried chicken, but for me to show you how to cut up a chicken and do this. Okay, so to make the lattice, you will need one of these. You can find them in any pastry shop. You can find them at Walmart. Sometimes they have them at the grocery store. Anywhere you have your baking supply items, you're gonna find one of these. And for the young gals that say, well, I don't even know what that is or what it does. Well, it's a little wheel. It spins, but it has a little decorative edge on it. And what we're going to do is we're gonna come right like this down this pastry and make some strips. And when I've made the strips, you're gonna be able to see the nice little edge that it makes, which is gonna be fun on the pie. You can make them as wide as you want or as thin as you want. I would say about, I think it's like a half inch wide is just fine for the pie. You just come all the way down the pastry. Just rolls real nice. All the way down, okay? Now we're still working on the pie. So on the pie, we're going to take one of the strips and I like to kind of lie mine in the middle right here. I'm just gonna kind of put it right here. And I'll put another one 
and another one. Here's your little strips right here. And then we're going to come along and what's the lattice part of it is, is that you're going to, it's a weave. You go in and under on top of the first one, top of the second one here, lift it up and go again. Your next stripe that would go down here, this one now needs to be under it, under this one on top. So it's like every other one, every other one. Okay. And this is gonna give the pie a very nice appearance and still hold all of the pie in there. Now that was pretty simple, wasn't it? Nothing to be afraid of at all. So do not be afraid of the pie. All the young kids that, uh, 30 and 40 year olds that uh, I get the biggest kick out of that wouldn't attempt something like this because they feel like it's too intimidating to them when it's not. This is really pretty easy. Anybody can do it. Okay, so your leftover pie, um, you can either throw it away or you can make what I used to make is that I would take butter and put on here and then I put cinnamon and sugar and then I would roll them all up like this. And they were fun to bake and have as a little treat too. But I'm not gonna do that right now today. <laughs> today, we're, not, we're still working on the pie. So again, I'm gonna just roll up my pie pastry cloth here and set it aside so I can still work on my pie. Now we're not done with this pie, so we have to cut off the edges of the pie. I like to cut it even with the edge of this pie pan because what I will do is I'm going to tuck under these little pieces. You don't have to, but I just kind of find I like doing that. I think it looks better. Again, we're just going to kind of tuck those under a little bit here. Tuck it under the pie. And that just kind of holds those lattice strips in place. Now, you're thinking, are we done yet? No, not quite. So you want kind of an edge around here. So you could take a fork and go along here, or like what I have taught everybody, you take the two first fingers of your, of, of your left hand and then your index finger of your right, and you just squeeze it together. It's real simple. Just squeeze together. The index finger goes in between these two fingers. And that's how you get your edge. No matter what pie pastry that you're using, whether it's store-bought like this or one that's already done in the little silver foil pie pans, that the pastry part's already done, all you have to cook. You have to just cook the pie pastry. But this is so simple to do it this way. I buy them all the time, I really do. Now we're going to put um, an egg wash on here. And why an egg wash? Because the egg wash is going to make the top part of the pie when it's baking, it's gonna make it such a pretty golden brown. It really is. And I just take, I've said it before, I just buy these at Harbor Freight, the nice clean paint brushes, um, small ones. And if you don't like the little ends on them, you know, snip it off, which I've done. And you're just going to use this 
instead of those expensive pastry uh, brushes, these work just fine. They really do. Now you wanna coat each one of the lattice and the edges with your wash. Each one. I have preheated my oven to 350 and we're gonna cook this about 40 to 45 minutes depending on your oven. Mine, I'm hoping that it'll about 40 minutes on it will be just fine. And it's gonna be nice having my nice fruit pie of rhubarb. My favorite pie is a blueberry pie. I've always liked blueberry. I really have. And I need to make a nice homemade blueberry pie. Not the kind that you um, buy the pie filling in a can. Those are good too, they are. But a homemade one using regular blueberries. I'll try to work on that and think about that, getting that next in a video. Okay, so there is the pie ready now to go into the oven. Again, 350 for about 35 to 45 minutes, depending on your oven. And I will pop it in now and I will catch you in a few minutes, well, 40 minutes <laughs> when it's out of the oven. Okay, I'll catch you in a few. I'm back and my pie is out of the oven. It took exactly 40 minutes to bake my pie. What I like to do when I take out a pie, especially a homemade one, is I'll take that brush again with some nice soft butter and I will go along the top part of the pie and around the edges. All like I did like the white wash, only this one now is with butter. And then I will take sugar bowl and I'll take some sugar and I will sprinkle the sugar on top of that. A little bit more sugar. And that makes a pretty looking pie. It really does. I will wait till this completely cools before I cut it and taste it, but I'm sure it'll be just fine because I've made them a lot and um, they're very, very tasty. So here's the start to my 4th of July cooking is my rhubarb pie. From my kitchen to yours, go make yourself a pie.